Okay, we're back from uh, the break, and while we were on break, we had Ed call in. Ed, are you there? Yes. Great. Thank you for calling. Oh, you're welcome. I wanted to know about the lipomas. Um, do, can they interfere with your organs if they're big enough? What? What? Was, hold on a second, Ed. Um, I'm going to get a little more sound in here. What? What was that question? Lipoma tumors. Lipomas, yes. Can they interfere with organs in your body if they get too big? Uh, yes, they can. And is that dangerous or? Well, lipomas usually are surface um, tissues, basically by the nature. They're basically a, f a fibrous tissue inside. Usually what happens is you bleed subcutaneously and that bleeding uh, tends to f form scar tissue and that scar tissue will uh, encapsulate fat and form a globule and then that will form a lipoma. In rare cases you might get a liposarcoma meaning uh, a, a tumor uh, out of that but that would be something that you would notice because the tumor, the, 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 the lipoma will continue to grow in size. Most lipomas usually are, appear and then they stay at that particular size. They might enlarge depending on what your body does over time. Did but, I understand you right? Uh, did you say that they start because of bleeding? It, it's basically an encapsulation. Lipomas are what you would call fibrous tissue that, that encapsulates or uh, comes together. Normally fat is very confluent. It's like a, uh, a water. It's just like a gel. And mm -hmm. if you get fibrous tissue that can come in there and, and, and encapsulate it or, or strand it, scar tissue contracts. And as it contracts, it, it forms a, the fat into a globule. And that forms the lipoma. So if it's very, very big, it can sometimes interfere with with other organs. But if you have one internally, uh, that's a little different story. But most lipomas are benign. They're on the surface of the skin. They're, they're disfiguring. Um, uh, they might be painful if they press against certain bony prominences. Uh, they usually don't cause much of a problem, uh, and they usually remain stable, but there are exceptions to every rule. So, What, what, what can you do to prevent, if you have the operation, I've had a couple of operations, but they grow back. Yes. Um, well, in, in that particular case, the, probably the trauma from the actual uh, removal may actually cause more bleeding under the skin, and then it can, you know, it can uh, thing of that of that fat. Uh, basically, it's kind of a, I don't, I don't want to say, it, you know, whenever you cut into the skin, you're going to bleed under the skin, and that subcutaneous bleeding can cause maybe more scar tissue. So while you do remove it, more fat fills in, and there's more scar tissue, and that may be the process that takes place that allows it to reoccur. Oh, brother. Okay, well, thank you for that information. You're welcome, Ed. Thank you for calling. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they do occur uh, quite, quite, quite commonly. Uh, and uh, so sometimes you can remove them and, and a, good, a, good, a good surgeon will, you know, try and dry the field, sometimes maybe putting a small drain in to make sure the fluid is drained out after removal. Uh, may help to prevent reoccurrence uh, of that particular uh, lipoma. One of the things that, unfortunately, I don't know that you would ever want to do this, but some people get unfortunate. They get injections of cortisone underneath their skin in their muscle, and then some of it gets through the skin and it dissolves the fat, and then you get this dimpling of, of the fat. Now, I'm not going to suggest that, Ed, you go get injections of, of cortisone into your lipoma because... Uh, the disfigurement may not be, uh, the fat of, uh, reabsorption may not be uniform and you may get multiple small lipomas from a uh, central cavity of, of fat being dissolved. So uh, liposuction to remove all the fat in the area might be a way to get rid of it, um, but you might want to consult with a plastic surgeon in that area.
okay, so back to the discussion of uh, GERD and, and esophageal reflux. We were talking about um, COPD. We we're talking about the treatment uh, using the proton pump inhibitors, uh, using calcium citrate. Uh, the other thing that uh, if you're taking, ca take calcium citrate if you're taking those, if you need calcium because the uh, meprazoles of the world uh, do interfere with calcium absorption. Um, most of the time, if you're still having trouble with a little bit of the, um, just using Pepsid or if you're using a Meprazole over the counter, you can add the Pepsid and you get the one-two punch. Uh, I talked about H. pylori. H. pylori is a bacteria um, that uh, exists in our stomach. So if you happen to have a gastric ulcer, it's very important that you get tested for H. pylori. And if you've ever had an EGD, uh, as um, I th uh, one person said, uh, they, if they go down into your esophagus and look there, and they will sample and look for uh, uh, H. pylori. Uh, they will either do a sampling or a culture or a stain. That bacteria, if it is there, does need to be treated. There is a breath test for it. Uh, and uh, it is, has been linked to ulcerative disease and increasing acid reflux. Unfortunately, you can treat it. Uh, it does need to be treated one time. Uh, it does need to be treated multiple times uh, with a, a course of an antibiotic and some Pepto-Bismol and a, um, they call it a Prev pack. Uh, there's multiple antibiotics. And um, so if you do have that problem, it is important that you do get the H. pylori test to make sure that you don't have that. And if you don't, great. And if you do, it's treated. And that, that case is uh, usually closed at that point. Uh, your memory or your body will remember the H. pylori infection for some time to come. So it is important for you to be tested once and only be treated once. It does not uh, reoccur uh, as far as I understand it. Um, and so it's just a one-time one -time treatment. Um, at any rate, uh, the other things that I find very helpful and I tell people to do is to elevate the head of the bed. Uh, elevating the head of your bed, uh, and that doesn't mean everybody says this to me, they say, oh, I sleep on two pillows. Well, mm, you don't always wake up on the two pillows. Your body tosses and turning all during the night. So what I suggest is you get a two by four block and you turn it on its small side, not the high side, and you basically will raise your bed one and three quarters of an inch. Uh, under the head post and uh, you uh, wait for that to acclimate usually over a couple of weeks and then you um, will uh, then add the other block so you'll be about three inches and that does a lot to uh, cause an incline causing your stomach to to stay down your contents will help stay down uh, into your stomach so we have John on the phone John yes doctor how you doing tonight I'm doing okay. I, I, I'm glad that I saw you on the TV for a change. I, I didn't know that there was a local doctor we could talk to. Well, I'm glad you found that out and called. I'm a, I'm a veteran, and uh, we have new rules now for veterans. We had, there's two of them. If, if you have to go over 70 miles to the, to the doctor, that'd be to Pecos, you can't, you can't use that one. Hmm. But the other one is, we can use any doctor if it takes more than 30 days to go to Pecos. So I want to know if you have a doctor available for ear, nose, and throat, because I've had stomach problems for oh, oh, probably a year and a half. I, I believe there is a Dr. Becker that comes up here. I don't know if he's Oh, yes, yes, once a month. Up yeah. Okay, well. That was my, my question, if we, we had uh, someone besides him up here. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I didn't think so either. All right, doctor. Well, uh, I'm having severe problems, and I have a good uh, VA uh, doctor. He's a PA, but he's been, he's been my doctor for about 12 years here in Pahrump. Good. But he, can't, but he cannot do anything because his hands are tied. Oh. So we have to make, we have, if you're a veteran, you have to make a, a schedule with a local doctor. Now that Dr. Becker, I'll have to pay for that, but that's that's okay. Why do you have to pay for that? Well, it's healthcare partners. Oh, oh. Well, I would think the, the issue is now the VA is gonna pay those doctors before the VA didn't. Well, what happens is, <clears throat> I had a, a colonoscopy done 
at the uh, local hospital here, mm -hmm. and it took me about uh, eight months, but uh, the VA did pay for it. Okay. So well, I'll, I'll check into the, and ask, when I see my doctor on the 22nd, I'll yeah. make an appointment for Dr. Becker also. Yeah, I, I would think that if they change the rules, they also change the payment rules to coincide with that, so that uh, healthcare partners would bill the VA maybe a Medicare rate and be able to collect that, uh, to collect that money. Uh, and that's basically the, the issue. So uh, I would call, you know, healthcare partners, call Becker, call whoever you need to call and uh, see what you can find out. Thank you, Doctor. I, I really need a specialist because uh, I have everything that you, you were describing in my stomach uh, for a long, long time. Well, good. I'm, I'm hoping you get into somebody really quick. Thank you. Thank you, you Doctor. Yeah, thank you, John, for calling in. Appreciate it. Um, those, are, those are good rules for the veterans because uh, now they can um, get out and see some of the other doctors in town because I know the VA is, is money is tight and times are hard. Uh, they basically uh, have obviously taken some steps to uh, to alleviate some of the pressure on the Veterans Administration and give them a better name and reduce some of the pressure um, off of them. So um, that's good. And I think you've hopefully may have been talking about Bill Carl, um, if that's the case. I worked with Bill. He's a very nice gentleman, very attentive to his patients, and has a good history of taking care of his people. So um, you, you, you're in good hands there. Um, anyway, we're going to be uh, shortly going to break, and uh, we'll be coming back, and then we'll be talking a little bit more about GERD, uh, finishing up a few of the details. We were talking about elevating the head of your bed um, and uh, getting a couple of two-by-fours in there. It's certainly a lot cheaper, as I told one patient, than a sleep number bed. Uh, so we'll be right back. Thank you very much. <music> 